morning and welcome to our midweek worship service. Uh, special thanks to our music director, Elizabeth Johnson. I could sit and listen to Elizabeth all day long. Uh, this weekend in worship, we will journey uh, with Jesus up the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, this concludes the season of Epiphany and plunges us then into the season of Lent. And next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and we will have Ash Wednesday worship at 11.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. They will be hybrid services, both online and in person. If you will be worshiping from home and would like an Ash Wednesday worship packet, it includes Ash's Holy Communion and, uh, and the bulletin for Ash Wednesday. They're available here at the church office, or let us know if you need one dropped off at your home. We want to thank you for supporting the Super Bowl of Caring. Uh, we, uh, we've already raised more than $1,500 for our local food ministries, thanks to your generosity. In our prayers this morning, we pray for all those in our ongoing prayer concerns, and we particularly pray for those uh, facing the uncertainty of COVID and for uh, continued uh, efficiency in the distribution of the vaccine. Our call, our call process continues, and a, a brief update on that. Our, our church council has scheduled an interview with our candidate uh, for next week. So please pray for the candidate, for the council, and for the process. Let us begin worship with a word of prayer. Lord God, we are grateful. You've gathered us at this time, in this way. We're grateful that you continue to be present in our lives and in the world in these perilous times. You are the one who gathers all our fears and removes them from us. You are the one who shows us the way of honor and dignity. You are one who gives us the glimpse of the heavenly. You are the author of peace and the giver of joy. You give us the assurance of eternal life. Bless us and guide us in our worship this day and always. Amen. Scripture today, uh, a couple of very familiar passages. Psalm 46, uh, the first seven verses. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not be feared, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. God lifts God's voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And our gospel today, uh, from Sunday, from the Transfiguration, Mark's gospel, the ninth chapter, beginning at the second verse. And six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. The cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the glimpses that we have of your heavenly presence. We give you thanks for the mountaintop experiences, and we pray that they would strengthen us, encourage us, fill us with a sense of your presence, strengthen us when we find ourselves in the dark valleys and difficult moments. In your name, amen. Many years ago, more than I care to remember at this point, when I was living in South America, we decided to spend a weekend in the Andes Mountains. It was late summer and a beautiful morning as we left Buenos Aires. We began our journey up and our journey toward Chile. The scenery was breathtaking as we, um, as we made our way up the mountainside. And each time we would get out of the car to stretch our legs or to move about, the temperature had dropped by another 10 degrees. The winds picked up. The breezes were definitely not the summer breezes we left below. As we got closer to our destination, which in the winter was a ski resort high in the Andes Mountains, we began to pass through some low-hanging clouds. When we hiked, the scenery was amazing, and I had to layer my clothes in order to stay warm. And I remember, I remember at the time thinking of all the places in Scripture where God's mystery and majesty is associated with the mountains. That is certainly the case in this gospel. Jesus was always headed off to a quiet place to pray, usually alone and often on a mountaintop. But in this in this case, he takes with him Peter and James and John. And there, on the mountaintop, they had this inexplicable experience. Jesus looked like he'd been dipped in Clorox. His clothes became dazzling white. And then, long gone, Elijah and Moses showed up to high-five Jesus. They had this glimpse of heaven. The disciples had this glimpse of heaven and it had to occur to them, if it hadn't before, that Jesus indeed is the long-awaited Messiah. This is quite an experience for the disciples. If they had harbored any doubts about leaving their fishing boats behind and following Jesus, if they were prone to dark moments or worry or anxious thoughts, I imagine all would have been driven from their minds at least for this moment. There are moments in all of our lives when we have a, a clear, unequivocal experience of the presence of God in the midst of whatever it is that we may be facing. Moments when we may want our faith to be stronger or our spirit to be more resilient or our hearts to be filled with peace in place of anxiety. This is a mountaintop experience, and all of us have them. Moments when the veil between heaven and earth is pulled away, and at least momentarily, we are more than certain about the presence, love, and grace of God. Think about one of your mountaintop experiences. It may have been standing at the altar, pledging your life to the beloved, to your beloved, or in the hospital delivery room, or helping a little one take a first step, or pedal away on a bicycle. Life is filled with glimpses of the holy. And we all, we all, like the disciples in the gospel, we want to hold on to them. Michael, Michael had his dream job. He had a marketing role in the Tampa Bay Rays baseball organization. He loved baseball. He loved his job. He had dreamed of it his whole life. He told everybody it was his dream job. Then, then he learned that his young daughter, Rebecca, has a rare and degenerative disease which will lead to blindness. When Rebecca turned 10, Michael quit his dream job. He quit his job in marketing with the Rays. He did so because he wanted to be able to spend more time with Rebecca. 
and to take her places while she still had her sight and would be able to see. He wants his beautiful daughter's visions. He wants his beautiful daughter to have visions to cherish throughout her life. He wants her to see the beauty of God's creation while she still can. He wants her to have a bit of what the disciples experience in this gospel today. The disciples and Jesus leave the Mount of Transfiguration and and we too walk down the walk down the mountain into the Valley of Lent. This will, of course, take Jesus to the cross and ultimately to the resurrection. This seems to be the church's way of saying that life is filled and lived, both on the mountaintops as well as in the darkest valleys of lives. And no matter where we are, God is with us. During World War II, One Easter, a command was given by the Nazis that no churches were to hold Easter services. Soldiers were stationed at the doors of all of the locked churches and cathedrals. Despite that, the faithful gathered on the steps of one of the cathedrals. The pastor was there, and they began the Easter service there, outside. The soldiers ordered him to stop, but he did not. He was ordered a second time to stop the service, but he continued. And when he continued in defiance of the soldier's order, they grabbed a young mother holding a baby and pulled her to the steps so that all could see. And then he put his gun to her temple and looked at the pastor and said one more word. Silence. Silence. And then from the silence, the sound of a single voice singing. A mighty fortress is our God. A sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation glorious. It was the young mother holding her child, a gun at her temple. And then all the faithful who had gathered that moment joined in, for God himself fights by our side with weapons of the Spirit. In moments of tribulation and darkness and despair, like the young woman on the steps of the church, we simply need to keep our focus on Jesus. Amen. As we pray today, I encourage you to think of something that you're grateful for. Some place where you've recently seen God's love. What you might need to give you hope. And how God has been faithful in your life. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, gracious Father, we are grateful for your faithful presence, no matter what we are going through. We give you thanks for guiding our community of faith. We give you thanks for our leaders, our teachers in our preschool, and for all who share your faithful love. We give you thanks for blessing us with this love, a glimpse of which we get in this gospel today. Strengthen us through moments like this for the journey, wherever it leads. We pray for leaders in our nation and around the world, particularly as uh, the vaccine is distributed. We pray that you would continue to open up lines of distribution and that would be distributed throughout the globe in a fair and equitable way. We pray for 
your presence with all those who are troubled in body, mind, or spirit. We especially lift up those who have been impacted by the coronavirus and those in our ongoing prayer concerns. This morning we lift up Aaron Voice, Dale Gabor, Jerry Ann, Mike Gray, Phyllis Hagen, Carol Hopeful, Michael Howard, Lara Lloyd, the family of Labar Lux, Marlene, John Monroe, David Nevin, Babette Sheeman, Chelsea Stoger, Wayne Tryon, Cindy Toth, Ginny Garkey, Pat Mitchell, Don Mitchell, Jean Raymond, Carolyn Newmore, Carol Edkins, Jim Jaykosh, Casey Kotwicka, Steve Skladaney, Tom Martinek, Ethel Nelson, Amy and Stan Rolf, Deb Zapinski, Dino York, the Zebros, and all those who we name in our hearts before you. Lord, gather all these prayers and receive them as we pray in the words you taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. From Philippians, be anxious about nothing, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us for worship this morning. We invite you to join us Saturday afternoon at 415, Sunday morning at 1045, and each day at 1130 for our daily devotion.